elongated oak table stretched the length of the gigantic room above the wizards and witches the luminous moon shone its elegant diamond blue rays of shimmering moonlight down on the exotic smooth stone flooring of the great hall the ghostly orange candles are like fly f fireflies while the torch-bearing gargoyles watched everyone intently as they radiated comfort as they ra radiated comfort light and heat the wizards mumbled to each other about the feast Suddenly, the sound came to a halt as the owls came to deliver all the students' letters from the stained glass window by sprouting their wings. The owls found all of their owners crashing into the chocolate brown tables and pushing the food everywhere. All the young and old wizards and witches were excited, all except for one, Ron. Oh no, this is not good, he gasped, feeling like he, he had a lead ball in his stomach. What is the matter, Ron? Are you okay? Harry asked, befuddled, confused by the look on Ron's face. Oh look, everyone, Ron's got himself a ha ha howler, exclaimed Neville, trembling in fear for Ron. I had one of them. It was from my nan. It was terrible. Ron's hand was shaking everywhere, like a conductor leading the orchestra as he peeled open the now smoking envelope. Ronald Weasley, how dare you leave your little sister on the train to Hogwarts? Your dad and I are so horrified. If you do this again, you will not go to that school. Also, Ginny, are you all right, sweet pie? Have a good day. And to you, Ronald, don't do this again. Although the hall was dead silent, it was interrupted by the howler shredding itself in half a second and turn into dust. His pale forehead head turned into crimson red, scared from head to toe. Ron stood up and ran out the great hall. Well, I didn't expect that, gasped Hermione while staring at Harry. Me neither, agreed Harry, quietly feeling guilty as he was to blame too. I'm going to see if Ron is okay, uttered Hermione, pushing her chair back chasing after Ron. Me too, responded Harry, concerned for Ron. As the door creaked open, the candlelit room had a, had a feeling of warmth and reassurance to it. The candles that daintily uh, floated in the air danced like ballerinas at a show. Aspiring witches and wizards ambled in, um, eyeing the roasted pig, uh, crispy potatoes, and boiled vegetables as a wolf would a nice, plump, juicy chicken. The lost over mahogany benches groaned loudly as the children eagerly perched on them, ready to enjoy their feasts. The pitter-patter from the rain on the roof and occasional thunder was soon drowned out by the deep conversations of the pupils and sound of silverware on plates. Um, spears of moonlight pierced the torch-bearing gargoyles that patrolled the room uh, as they shone through the beautiful stained glass windows. Ghosts soon trailed in and cheerfully greeted each student. Mouth-watering rooms filled the room as the, as the ch uh, children, like ravenous beasts, hunched over, making sure they got every last drop of the gravy. Suddenly, the all-too-familiar cloud of white, black, and brown covered the candlelit sky. The repetitive thumps of owls collapsing headfirst into the abused tables echoed around the room. Jubilant giggles, chants, and cheers filled the room as cheerful children ripped open their gifts. However, at the Gryffindor table, Ron Weasley looked in horror at the letter in front of him. Seamus, a boy curious as to why Ron was so quiet, looked over his shoulder. Look everyone, Weasley's got himself a howler, he suddenly burst out. The room fell silent. Uh, faces with expressions of terror, sympathy, or triumph turned towards Ron. Go on, Ron. I, I ignored a howler from my grandmother once. It was horrible, trembled Neville. Ron let out a weak groan and with shaking hands, slowly ripped open the envelope and prepared for the explosion. Ronald Weasley, you clumsy little boy. I can't believe that you broke your wands. Your father and I are horrified. Do you have any idea how much wands cost these days? I have no clue how we'll get enough money for a new one. Ugh, I'm absolutely livid. 
If you do so much as pull your sister's hair, you're coming, ho you're coming straight home and you're not coming back. Oh, and Jenny, dear, good job on doing so well in your classes. Your father and I are so proud. Grrr. By the time the Heller had ripped itself up and burst into flames, Ron had sunk so low in his chair, um, all you could see was tiny tufts of his messy ginger hair. Harry pulled him up, and poor Ron was the color of a plum and was hyperventilating. I can't eat anymore, Ron announced, obviously too mortified to eat. Dr Draco Malfoy um, had been laughing through the entire howler and was now rolling on the floor trying to catch his breath. This just added to the embarrassment for Ron. I'm going to bed, Ron announced angrily, now the color of a blueberry. As he stormed out of the room, Hermione sat stunned at his sudden outburst. Maybe I should go s to see if he's all right. Hermione whispered to Harry as she got up. I'll come too, Harry replied. And with looks of concern on their faces, they walked out of the hall while everyone else resumed their dinner as if nothing happened. Lengthy chocolate brown tables stretched out as far as the eye could see in the glorious Great Hall. The echoes of jubilant children chattering bounced along the towering brick walls as cutlery sliced through giant moist roast chickens. Overhead, the saffron spiraling candles hovered like a drone in a magical, luminous starlight. Lustrous, diamond blue rays of shimmering moonlight blazed down on the exotic smooth stone pathways. Professor Dumbledore stood proudly like the king at the front of the almighty Great Hall. Aggressively, the big tenacious gargoyles waved their raging firelit torches as they marched forward like soldiers. The ghostly garnet red fires twirled elegantly above the glossy crystal clear stained glass windows. All of a sudden, the clinking of cutlery came to a halt. Like rockets from army tanks, abundant amounts of magnificent snow-white owls soared adroitly through the immense mountain-like doors. Skillfully, the triumphant owls searched eagerly like darts aiming for the target. The thrilled children looked hopefully up at their glorious owls. Fred and George Weasley, the cheeky duo, watched up at their clumsy family owl, Errol, as it came tumbling down and landed face first on a pile of mashed potato. As the red letter dropped, Fred and George stared at each other in fear. What is the problem? questioned their younger brother Ronald. Oh no, you guys have got a howler, screamed Neville Longbottom, thinking back on week when he got a howler. Uh oh, someone's been naughty, cheekily giggled Seamus, whilst pointing his finger at them. George and Fred shook nervously like a leaf in the wind. Anxiously, they both flipped up open the top of the letter and... George and Fred Weasley, why on earth would you think that it is a good idea to set off fireworks during an exam? You two are meant to be setting a good example for your younger siblings. Do you know how serious this could have been? You are lucky you didn't blow up the whole school. Dumbledore will be so disappointed in you, and so is your mother and I. I'm extremely let down by your despicable behaviour. If you carry on in this impudent way, you might get expelled, and if that happens, I will lock you in your room for a year. Dumbledore has to repair the destruction, and this is entirely your fault. Oh, and my darling Ginny. A huge congratulations on making it into Gryffindor. Your mother and I are delighted with you. Also, you have been a dear, brilliant student at Hogwarts. Unlike some people. <sniffs> the hall suddenly broke into a silence. Everyone looked around at the other children, flabbergasted. Fred and George turned rosy red and hid slightly under the table. As they poked over the top of the table, they watched around at the silenced children. Afraid, they gently picked back up the letter and stared at it in embarrassment. Ferociously, 
The crimson red letter shredded itself up into minuscule flaming ashes and dust. Suddenly, bursts of, laugh, bursts of laughter rippled across the great hall. The two mischievous brothers stomped out of the hall, heads down in humiliation. That was unexpected, uttered Ron, looking around his eyes wide open in confusion. Very, replied, replied Ginny in shock. You two twins are even more of a scaredy cat than your stupid brother Ron, taunted Draco Malfoy mercilessly. Ron and Ginny followed their older brothers out of the great hall.